Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc. Manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated. Inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us This season of Hands On is all about living things. Learn about the animals and plants that share our environment through great projects. We've divided them into the same classifications used by scientists. First, we divide the animal kingdom by whether or not they have a backbone. Then we look at other characteristics like what they eat, where they live, and their body temperature. The groups we'll study are amphibians, birds, fish, mammals, and reptiles. For invertebrates, we'll divide them into insects, arachnids, and crustaceans and mollusks. For plants, we'll talk about the way we see and use plants in everyday life. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. Remember, be creative, and let's learn about living things. Some of the most familiar plants are trees and bushes. Trees are a woody plant with a distinct main part or trunk. At maturity, trees are usually the tallest of plants, and their height and single main stem are what make them different from shrubs, which are shorter and have many stems. Trees are perennials. That's a plant that lives for at least three years. First up is a seed container made to look like a tree. Then create a clay letter as a room decor with a fun technique for creating texture. Next up, it's some of the products made from trees in one project. So let's head to the forest. Our first project is a recycling project, and we're going to cover an old chip canister with a wonderful wood look paper, and then a green kind of topiary on top of it. Uh, the supplies that we're going to need are your canister that is recycled. We need a styrofoam ball. We need some paper so that we can color. We'll be needing some uh, watercolor pencils, we've got clay, that, and this is the oven baked clay. We'll also need a rolling tool for our clay, some a glue stick and tacky glue, scissors, a permanent pen, and again some more clay tools that we can work with. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by designing our wood design for our canister. And I've already pre-cut the paper so that it's going to wrap around nicely and give me a little bit of extra room to glue down. And so I'm going to draw my design on it. And I just want this to look like wood, so you can be pretty random and make it kind of curvy. We can do some knots in the wood like this. And just some fun lines that we can then go back and fill in and color. I'm just going to keep going a couple more knots in the wood. And it might be fun to go and research some trees that are in your neighborhood and see what the bark looks like. And you could design the bark so that it looks like something local. Once you've got that done, we can go ahead and we can take our crayons. I'm going to use some browns and even a little bit of black. I'm going to color in with these pencils. So now again, it might be fun to do a little bit of research and look and see what's local so that you can match the colors. So I'm going to color that in. And the more pressure that you put on these crayons, the more vibrant the color that you're going to get. You can also shade by using the side of the pencil and do some really detailed work on here. The pencil's lead, because they're soft, will give you different effects depending, again, if I'm holding it straight up and down or if it's on its side. So let's have a little look at this one. And I've finished coloring this one all in. And so now we're ready to glue it onto the canister. Use this nice glue that will hold it in place. This glue dries clear, so if I'm a little bit messy, it's not going to matter. Let's do a nice coat all the way across the paper. And then we'll take the lid off and roll that into place. 
just like that. After you've got this in place, you'll want to set it aside to dry. If you need to go back after and add a little bit more glue to it, that's okay too. There we go. So I'm going to set that aside. It's all done. And the next thing we're going to do is work on our decorative top. So I'm going to take my styrofoam ball and this top is going to be glued onto the lid of the canister. So the first thing we need to do is cut using a plastic knife a little bit of the ball off. This will give us a nice flat edge to glue on and it'll make sure that it's staying in place nice and stable. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cover this ball with our oven baked clay. And the styrofoam can go in the oven and bake with your clay. So we're going to take our clay and I've already conditioned it. Conditioning is warming it up in your hands to make sure that it's soft and pliable. I'm going to move everything off of my work surface and you can see that I've already covered it and made sure that it's easy clean up so that I'm not preparing my clay where I'm going to pre prepare food later. Okay, so we're going to roll this out. If you had a pasta machine, you could also use the pasta machine to do this. Then you get a really thin, thin sheet of it. And of course the pasta machine that you would use would be dedicated to clay and you wouldn't want to use it for food afterwards. Okay, we'll keep on rolling. And you want to make sure that you spread this green really thin. And you'll probably need one of these larger packages so that you have enough leaves to cover the whole surface of the ball. So once it's all rolled out, I like to actually go ahead now and take scissors to cut each of my leaf shapes. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim leaves. And they can all be a little bit different because leaves are different. You'll want to cut quite a few of these. And if you find that you'd get some imperfect ones, then we'll just roll that back up into a ball again and make new ones. And also, after you've trimmed them, you can see mine are a little bit on the thick side. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to roll them a little bit thinner. There we go. Now these are just all going to go right onto our ball. You can just press them firmly and they sort of grip right onto the styrofoam. A little bit of overlap will make sure that they stay in place. And try not to overlap them too much because that way you'll get a little bit better coverage all over the ball. There we go. Now if you wanted to, you could even do some yellow leaves. A little bit of orange would look really good. Just like that. Okay, so I'm going to just switch over here. As I said, this can go right in the oven and bake according to the manufacturer's directions and it can be right on the styrofoam as it bakes. So you're going to end up with a ball that looks something like that when it's all baked. The next thing we're going to do is a nice little ladybug design to go on top of the ball. So I've got again a little piece of clay that I've already conditioned by warming it up in my hands. I'm just going to use my thumb to press that flat for the ladybug's body. Then I'm going to take a little piece of black clay roll it into a ball and tuck it very close up for the ladybug's head and add some simple dots to it. Again, you want to work with your lighter color clays first and that way you won't blend the darker colors into it if they've stuck to your fingers a little bit. Push the ladybugs in like that and then we're going to take a pin and you can poke the pin right through here through the ladybug while it's before you bake it. Tuck it into the clay so that you can't see it and then you can place that onto a piece of styrofoam and also bake it. And if you decided that you wanted to go and add a little bit more detail later after you've baked your project, you can actually add more clay onto it and then bake it again and it's not going to harm your clay. So after the piece is baked and we've baked our leaf ball, you can go ahead and poke the ladybug into place on the ball. We can also do a little bird to go on there. You could do all kinds of little creatures that you would find in trees, maybe a butterfly or a little inchworm. So for the bird, again, I'm going to roll a ball. This time I'm going to kind of make a little pointed body and then I'm going to squash it flat. And another ball for the head. You could always use different colors as well if you wanted to. A little yellow canary maybe. Push the birds like that. A little bit of a beak. And again you would tuck a little pin 
And I'm going to actually use a leaf shape for my wing. So we would again tuck a little pin into this and we would place it on a piece of styrofoam like I did with the ladybug and bake those and then we'll glue our ball to the top of our canister. You've got a great canister to store bird food or your pens and pencils. Our next project featuring trees is a monogram made from terracotta clay. Here's what you'll need. First we've started out with a letter, then we have our microwave clay in terracotta, we have a stamp and it can be any leaf stamp for your favorite tree or bush. We also have some paint. Then we have in our extra supplies we have sandpaper, a little plastic knife, some white glue, a little uh, container of water, scissors and paper towels. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is protect our work surface always, especially when we're working with clay so that we're not getting it on any food items that we might be using later. To prepare our letter, and this is kind of like a masonite board, we're going to put a layer of glue on it. Now we're not actually sticking the clay to the letter, but this will give it just a little bit more of a, like a rubbery surface when it dries. Then I'm going to set this aside to dry and you want to cover it very carefully around the whole surface. The next thing I'm going to do, let's whip that little bit of clay, clay away. I've got one here that's dry and you can see it's just got that little bit of extra sheen. Then I'm going to start working with my microwave clay. This is very light and pliable. You can see it's almost kind of got a um, very smooth consistency. I'm going to take it a little bit at a time and rather than even rolling it out, I'm going to press it onto my letter. I'm going to work all the way across and I want it to be kind of an even consistency. I have a rolling pin here too. We can uh, knead it in our hands a little bit. It works just like any other type of clay. And I'll take it off in sections and I'm going to work my way all the way around. What's so nice about it is it cuts so easily just with a plastic knife. I'm going to break off some of these edges and if there's any um, areas that are a little bit rough I can dip my hands in the water, smooth it a little bit I'm going to continue working around keep kneading it, conditioning the clay a little bit in my hand just to make it a little bit soft and pliable. And you can make it as thin or as thick as you'd like. I'm going to take my roller and kind of roll along it. Get some of that excess out. And try to make it a fairly uniform depth. Now the other thing that I want to do is make sure though that it's thick enough that I can also press into it. I'm going to go back with my knife, go from the back. Let's cut away all this excess. What's so nice too is that you can blend it and you can add extra pieces on top and that little bit of glue which made that surface just a tiny bit tackier really helps keep it stuck exactly where I want it as I'm building it. Again I'm going to just keep pressing on. See how easy that is to do? Once I get it all the way around let's keep working a little bit farther. And then I continue on until it's totally done. As I said, smoothing and trimming as needed. So let's leave that and we'll finish that later. Then I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to randomly push in the stamp. I'm using a nice even pressure. Some of them are going to extend off the end. If that lifts your clay up, if I pressed a little too hard, all I have to do is go back and push it right back in and stamp in again do a couple on the other direction. I'm going to go all the way around until I have it exactly the way I like. Go back in, make sure everything is nice and smooth, smooth it with my fingers until I have a nice even impression. Now you could use any rubber stamp, not just leaves. Once this was all completed, the next step 
would be to take this and put it in the microwave. You're going to follow your, manu your manufacturer's instructions, which are on the package. But when I place this in the microwave, I'm going to place the piece, and I'm also going to place a container of water. That's really important because that's what keeps the moisture in the clay. Put that in the microwave, following the instructions. When it comes out, and I've got one here that's all ready, let's get this out of the way, it's going to look like this. It's got a nice, very, very light weight, but it's a nice, crisp consistency. Now, if there's any pieces that I missed, I can go back in and sand it lightly. Anything that's sharp, and make sure I have a nice, smooth edge. Then the next step is I want to take my brown paint. And I'm going to brush that on, but I want to have a paper towel, a dry one and a wet one handy. And I'm going to brush that on top. I'm going to do it in sections. And then I'm going to go back with my paper towel and wipe immediately. I think I want a little bit darker than that. Really get it into those crevices. Let's get a little bit more paint there. One whole section, then immediately go back and brush that off. What you're going to get is this beautiful antique look. Remember, don't use too much water because you don't want to get your clay wet. Just that little bit of dampness. See how pretty that is? Let's do one little more section. Now, I've chosen to use brown and give it this antique effect. But you could also use a color, too, that would match your room. This would be a perfect sign for your door, maybe for your bulletin board. Now, another important thing is you want to make sure that, depending on how heavy your letter is, that you paint the back when your front is all dry. And if you'd like, you can add a hanger on the back or maybe a magnet. It would look great on your front door as well as on your bedroom door or maybe in the center of a wreath even on your locker at school. Make sure and paint all along the inside as well as along the entire front. Now if you take a look at our finished project, isn't that a great monogram for your door? Our final project is a cork bulletin board. And not only does cork come from trees, but we're going to decorate our bulletin board with oak leaves and acorn thumbtacks. Let's take a look at what we're going to use. We're using an oven bake modeling clay. We've got modeling tools. We're also using opaque pens um, and a cork tile that is 12 inches by 12 inches. Also a lightweight cork sheet. And our basic supplies are some rubber cement, we're using a penny as our pattern, thumbtacks, and a pair of scissors. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, on our website, you will find a pattern for an oak leaf, oak leaf. And if you'd like to, you can also draw your own or use a different shape leaf. I'm going to go ahead and I've cut out my pattern and I'm going to trace the pattern onto the thin cork sheet. And I'm gonna use the opaque markers right from the get-go here. You could trace it on with pencil if you wanted to first, but it would just be an extra step that you don't need to take. So I'm gonna go all the way around the leaf and this doesn't have to be perfectly traced because of course leaves, once they've fallen off a tree, lose a bit of their shape and they might get a little bit crumpled or a little bit dented. There we go, so I've got my leaf, and then of course we're going to draw the veins into it. And again, you can just do this freehand, it doesn't have to be exactly like the pattern. Let's go a little darker there, there we go. And then the next step is to color our leaves. So I've chosen to do some orange and some yellow. So I'm going to push down my tip of my pen to get it going, and then I'm just going to kind of put it a little bit here and a little bit there. And these pens blend beautifully on the cork. It looks really good when we're done. There we go, and then a little bit of the orange. And then you'll see that as I'm putting the orange on, I'm gonna mush it in with the yellow a little bit, overlap things. And then I'm gonna come back with the yellow marker one more time, and that's gonna give us a nice final blend on it. So you can see how they're mixing together. You can go over the veins a little bit, that's not a problem. And you get a really beautiful leaf, just like you would in nature. 
You could use a little bit of red on this. You could mix the brown in. And I've got a, a nice sample here showing how the greens look, which is another really pretty option. So once you have finished coloring in your leaf, we're going to cut them out. Now for the sample that I've done, I've used five colored leaves and five leaves with just the brown, because I thought that would be good to show that some leaves, once the color is all gone, just are completely brown. So you'll carefully snip this out. And again, if you make a little mistake, it's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be completely perfect. Try to follow the curve so we get that good oak shape is still showing. And if you find that you are cutting away too much of the outline and your leaf doesn't have as much definition anymore, you can just come back again and redo your outline. So I'm going to actually set this one aside because I've already pre-cut some for us. And let's have a look at the little acorns that we're going to make. I am using an oven baked clay and I'm starting with brown and black clay. And I'm going to make a little bit of a darker brown for the cap of the acorn. Now in acorns, they come in different colors, of course, because depending on what type of oak tree it comes from, you could do green, which would mean your acorn's not ripe yet, or you can do all different shades of brown. So it's not important to get an exact shade. What I've done is I've taken about one third of a little roll of black and maybe three times that of the brown, and I'm gonna twist those colors together to blend them. So you just squish it up, and as you're conditioning your clay, it's going to blend together. So you'll want to roll this back and forth a few times and keep folding it into each other and blending it. And you can see that it goes from this fun marbled effect into a nice solid brown. And of course you should make sure that you're working on a protected surface so that you're not preparing food on the same surface afterwards. So I'm going to have a little look. You can see how I go from the marbling. If I keep blending, I'm going to end up with a nice brown color like that. So I've also got my plain brown, and that's going to be the nut part of our acorn. I'm just going to roll it to a tip. Again, acorns have different shapes, so you might want to go and have a little look around your area and see if you can find an acorn, and then match your acorn to the ones that you find. So after I've got my shape done, I'm going to take the little brown piece and I'm just going to flatten it out with my thumb. Bend it out. And then I would like a fairly circular piece to go on the top for the little cap of the acorn. And so I'm going to put a penny right on there, push the penny into the shape, and then break away the excess clay. And that way I'm going to have a nice round piece. And I know that it's going to be approximately the right size. So then I'm going to just flatten it out a little bit again smooth my edges, and then I'm going to put the cap right on top of the acorn. You can see it's nice and round and fits on there really good. So then I'm going to take a modeling tool, and I'm going to cut some little crisscrosses across here. Just go like that. If you look at an acorn, they can be different textures too, so you might even want to go back and put a little bit of texture on the bottom of your acorn. Once that's all done, I've made a little tiny stem out of a piece of brown that I saved, and you can use your modeling tool to just gently push that into the dark brown. Just like that. Now, we have to be able to push this onto our push pin, and so what I've done is just very gently roll it into the back of your acorn, and then come back with your modeling tool and dig out that area. Now, if you happen to kind of squish your acorn while you're doing this. It's easy to go back and just re-roll it gently to get your shape back. You want to make sure that this hole that you're putting in the back is a little bit bigger than your tack so that you have room to push it in really nicely. So you can see I've kind of squished it a little bit so I'll just fold it back into its shape. And now just the acorn piece goes into the oven to bake. You don't want to bake your thumb tack, okay? And then once it comes out, it's going to be nice and hard like this, and we're going to glue that onto the back of our thumbtack. So I'm just going to move these aside, and what we're going to do is use the rubber cement for this. And so it gives it a really nice bond and keeps it on there really steadily. And I'm going to fill that little hole up really good with this to be sure that I'm not going to have it dropping off. And then this is going to take a couple hours to dry, so you'll want to leave it with the thumbtack up if you can. Maybe we can prop it between something and let that dry. So our final step is to just add our leaves onto our bulletin board. And I just put them kind of hanging a little bit off the side. 
put them in a pretty pattern so it looks like they're falling leaves, maybe blowing in the wind a little bit. And again, we're going to use the rubber cement to hold these on. So if we take a look at our finished project, you can see we've got the oak leaves all along the top, or the oak leaves, sorry, and our acorn to hold our little notes in place. And that's it for our study of living creatures. We left out one of the most important living animals, and that is man. Stay tuned next series when Hands On features people from all walks of life and all different countries. We hope you'll join us again for Hands On Crafts for Kids. Projects from today's show plus other ideas are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1213. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc., manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated, inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us Hi, I'm Kathy Stahl, host of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. I hope you'll join us each week as we show you craft basics and great projects, each with five steps and five main ingredients. We have a lot of crafting fun in store for you. And remember what we all say at Hands-On Crafts for Kids, there's no right or wrong way, only your way. Be creative, have fun. We hope you'll join us for Hands-On Crafts for Kids. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Hi, I'm Kathy Stull, host of Hands On Crafts for Kids. Our newest series is all about living things. We'll be crafting projects about mammals, amphibians, reptiles, insects, and more. All the projects have five steps and five main ingredients. Join us for Hands On Crafts for Kids and be creative and have fun.